Hello! Today I've got a couple of really simple tutorials for you. I'm going to show you how to make a simple table lamp and this little lamp table. The cutting list for the lamp table is in the description box below. So let's get started. So for the base of my lamp I'm going to be using a newel post and Newel posts and spindles are really good for lamps because they come in all different shapes and sizes and they always have parts that you can use as the sort of pedal stool of the lamp. Even that you could sort of maybe just cut off one or two of those little sort of ridges at the bottom and then use this lovely shaped part here as the pedal stool. That one as well you could cut above the square bit and use that section. I'm going to be using these newel posts and I'm going to be cutting just below that sort of largest bottom moulded bit there and then using this lovely pedal stool as the stem of the lamp. So the first thing we want to do is actually cut out the section that we want to use and the lamps I'm making, so I'm making the two bedside lamps and one lamp for my study, I'm going to do them all the same size and I want the pedestal bit to measure about 23 millimetres and that's about 7 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to cut it just below that part there and then I'll measure and cut where I need to up here. And for that I'm going to use my mitre block and saw. So pop the newel post or spindle into your mitre block and just line it up where you want to make the, the first cut at the bottom of the lamp base. And like I say I'm just going below that sort of larger moulded bit there. So hold the piece nice and tightly in the block and then just saw nice and slowly. Not putting too much pressure on either, just letting the saw do the work. And that way you get a neater cut. If you do find that you've got any little sort of fluffy bits at the end there, then just use your craft knife to trim those off rather than sanding the piece. As if you sand, you may end up taking away from the length or actually sanding at an angle and we want that to be nice and flat. So just pop it on your work surface and then just carefully trim away any little sort of fluffy areas there. Like that. And then you want to make your measurement. Now I, like I said earlier, want mine to be 23 millimetres. So I'm going to measure from the bottom there. And that's about 7 eighths of an inch. But obviously lamps come in all shapes and sizes. So if you wanted to do it a little bit taller or a little bit shorter, then obviously you can. And that probably depends on where you're going to put it. I think as a sort of living room or bedroom lamp, then about 23 millimetres is about right. If you wanted something smaller, maybe for a little side table or on a dressing table or something, then you go a little bit shorter. But a really good way of checking the sizes of lamps is to look online where they're actually for sale, full sized ones, and just have a look at the sizes, have a look at the height, the height of the shades, the diameters of the shades, and then reduce that by 12 to get your 12th scale measurement. Okay, so I'm going to pop this now back into the mitre block. And I just sort of prop it up on this eraser just because it's meant to hook over the edge of my desk. And I can't get the camera in at that angle, so... Okay, so again, pop that in. And then just make a nice slow cut. And again, any little fluffy edges you can tidy up using your craft knife. So the next thing we're going to do is drill a hole in the very centre at the top of the lamp base. And we're going to be using a dressmaking pin to attach the actual lamp shade. So use a 0.75mm bit, and that's 1 32nd of an inch, or something that's about the same size as a dressmaking pin. So. I'm just going by eye, but if you wanted to make a little pencil dot in the centre, then you can do that first. But get your drill bit into position and then drill down, keeping the drill as upright as you can. And I've just got that little bit of kitchen towel in there so that the jaws of the vice don't um, dent the wood. 
So drill down, you want to go down by about six millimetres or a quarter of an inch. And you can check that by using a dressmaking pin. So just pop that in there, push it in, put your thumbnail at the top and then pull it out and you can see how far down you've gone. And that's more than enough there. Take that out of the vise. So I'm going to be painting my lamp base, but you could leave it as natural wood if you wanted to, or you could stain or varnish it, or even use a nice metallic paint, either gold or silver or something like that. Again, lamps come in all different designs and colours, so you can really get imaginative with this. I'm going to be painting mine cream, which is my study sort of main furniture colour. And to make it a little bit easier, you can actually push the pin into the hole. And then you've got something to hold it with whilst you paint so that you don't get paint all over your fingers. And I'm just using an emulsion paint for mine. Once you've finished applying the paint, you can pop that into a sponge, like that, and that can be left to dry. So there's the basis for my bedroom lamps as well. And whilst those pieces are drying, we can make a start on the actual lamp shades. So for my lamp shade, I'm using this thin white card. And this has got a slight pattern on one side, but when I glue it together, I'll make sure that the pattern is on the outside so that the fabric is covering it. So if you've only got a piece of card that's patterned and plain on one side, then you can still use it, but just make sure that that's the bit that's get, that gets covered with fabric. And I've cut three pieces measuring 76 millimeters by 16 and a half millimeters high. So that's three inches by 21 30 seconds of an inch. And then you can actually use these as the template for the fabric. So for the bedroom, I'm using this lovely silk and that will look really nice against the wallpaper on the back wall where the bed and bedside cabinets is actually stood. And then for the study, I'm using this lovely blue stripe which coordinates with the sofa and the cushions in there. So you want to cut a piece of fabric that is just slightly bigger than your template. So probably, I don't know, about three millimetre border all the way around. And you don't have to really measure that out, you can just do that by eye. So do that for each lamp. So pop your fabric pieces to one side for now and then you want to cover both sides of each piece of card with double sided tape. So just sort of lay that on there and trim around. Put a piece on the other side as well. Do that with each of your pieces of card. So we're not actually going to remove the tape yet, but you need, if you're using a double-sided piece of card, you need to find out which is the plain side, and that will be on the inside of the lamp. So just have a little peep under your tape and check for the white side. And then we're just going to sort of shape this so that we can get it into a nice cylinder. And I just start by doing that between my fingers. If you just sort of try to fold it into a circle, you'll tend to sort of get folds in the cardboard. But if you sort of do this with it first and make it more supple, 
and you can wrap it around a piece of dowel or around a sort of pot of glue or anything you've got that's round just to make it into a nice smooth cylindrical shape and then we can now remove the tape on the white side of the card and then you want to glue it into that cylinder so that you're overlapping by about five millimeters So give that a good press. Like that. And then you can remove the tape from the other side. And then when you get to that end, you can just lift up the flap and pull that out and then just quickly stick it down again. And then you're sort of getting a double double stick on there and that will be a little bit more sturdy. You then want to bring in your fabric and stick the front of the lamp to the wrong side of the fabric so we're trying to join the fabric at the back where our join in the card is. So bring that round like that sticking it down Come round that way and if you've cut it a little bit too long as I have you can just trim a little bit off. You want a little bit of an overlap but not as much as I've got there. And then you can actually apply a little bit of glue to that flap of fabric and then stick that down. And I find that my Gorilla Wood Glue works really well with fabric but if you'd rather use a sort of proper fabric glue then you can. So glue that down like that and then we're going to start by tucking the top fabric in. So sort of push it in all the way around make sure you're pushing it right in so that you get that nice neat line around the top edge there and then sort of press it down on the inside. And then do the same at the other side. Go all around the edges and give that a good press down. So then where we've got our join will become the back of your lamp. So to attach the lamp to the base, I'm actually going to be using a strip of balsa wood. And this is 2.5 millimetres thick, 330 seconds of an inch. And I have tried using cardboard, but I find that the cardboard isn't strong enough and the lamp tends to slant to one side. So measure the diameter of your lamp. So just go across like that and then cut a strip of balsa wood that's three millimetres wide, so one eighth of an inch, and then cut it to the um, diameter of your lamp. Like that. And then just make a little pencil mark in the centre. And then poke one of the pins through. And then paint this piece the same colour as your base, just so that it won't be visible inside the lampshade. I've just popped those in my sponge to dry as well. Okay, so to attach the lampshade to the base, begin by applying a tiny little bit of glue just at the top of the little strip there, just around that hole, and then push it to the top of the pin, like that, and push it firmly to the top. And then bring in your pliers and just trim a little bit from the end of that pin, so probably about, I don't know, six millimetres, maybe a little bit less, about a quarter of an inch, like that. Apply glue to each end of the strip. And 
I'm now going to attach this into the shade so that it runs from side to side. So our join is at the back there and we want this to run from side to side. So put one end in, in about the centre, squeeze your lamp so you can get the other end in without sort of removing the glue. So it's sitting in there like that. Make sure it's level and then squeeze the shade against the edges like that to get the glue to work. Pop that down for a moment. Take the pin out of your base. And we're going to put a little bit of glue at the top of the base as well. And then you can push the pin into the base. And you want it so the lampshade sort of just sit in at the top of that base there. So you don't want to be able to see the pin from the front. So get it into a nice position and then you can give the strip another little squeeze. Now depending on the sort of diameter at the bottom of your base you may be able to stand these up on their own or they may topple over like that but if they do topple then you can just use a little bit of um, tacky wax or glue if you want to fix it permanently into place to get that to stand on the side. So mine doesn't stand up on its own so I'll use a little bit of tacky wax but first of all I need to make a little lamp table to actually stand it on so let's do that now. So I've put a cutting list for this in the description box below and we're going to begin by making a little pencil mark on each of the legs. Now the legs are the longer of the strips that you've got there so bring those in and we're going to do a pencil mark three millimetres or one eighth of an inch from the bottom of each leg. So just pop your rule on there, do the little pencil mark and then do the next one. But always make the pencil mark using the rule and not the leg that you've just marked up. And that way you get a more accurate pencil mark. Final one. We're now going to glue a tabletop support between each set of legs. So we'll apply glue to each end of one of the supports. My glue is just starting to go a little bit tacky there. Pop that back down and then attach it to the first leg so you've got a nice flush line along the top there that out as I said it <laughs> and then bring in the other one same thing again so you've got that nice flush line really carefully press those together and then just slide that piece along your work surface and that can be left to dry rather than trying to pick it up <laughs> As you can see, it's quite fragile. It might just fall apart. So leave that one there and then do the other one as well. And this is a really simple little table. And I've made things like this before, but I've included drawers and things like that. For this one, I just wanted something really simple as it's going to be sitting at a side of the sofa that isn't going to be visible. The lamp will show, but the table won't. So I just want something really simple. And now I've changed the position of my doll's house as well, so it's sitting in a corner of the room. You can't even look through the study window, so it won't be visible that way either. But it will still be a nice little lamp table. So I'll just pop those out of the way. And then we're going to attach the remaining two tabletop supports to either side of the tabletop. So apply glue along each edge of the top piece. And this is the smaller of the two table top pieces. And we've got that thicker piece that will actually be on top and visible. 
So push them against the edges like that. Make sure all pieces are flat against your work surface. Push it along again so that it's not actually sticking to your desk. And then you can remove your excess glue. Give those another press. And that as well can just be pushed to one side. And now take your shelf part, and that's the other bit that's from the 1.5 millimeter sheet wood, the 1 16th of an inch. And we're going to cut a three millimeter square from each corner, so three millimeters or one eighth of an inch. So begin by making pencil marks across the piece. So three millimeters there and there, and then at the other side as well. Like that, and then turn the piece and we'll make a another pencil mark to make the little square going up like that there as well and do that at the other edge as well so whenever you're cutting a section from a piece of wood you want to make sure that the first cut is going against the grain so my grain runs say from there to there so I want to make my cut this way first. So just using the very tip of your craft knife, just cut in to the wood like that. You need to do a couple of snips and then you can cut in the direction of the grain. Like that. So again, a couple of little snips. I've gone up a little bit high with that pencil mark so I'll just take it down a little bit and then you sort of work the tip of the knife in to get those little corners out so work your way around we're now going to attach the first set of legs to the supported top piece and we're going to attach them so that they just sit along the side like that the unsupported side and so that the little pencil marks we made on the legs are facing inwards. So apply glue along the edge of the supported top piece. Pop that down and press the first set of legs against it. Making sure you've got nice flush edges at each side what you can actually do here is bring in a spare piece of strip and use that to press the pieces together and then you'll get an even pressure all the way along. Carefully lay that onto its side and bring in the shelf and just pop a little bit of glue in two of those cutouts. This is going to sit above the little pencil marks that we made. Like that. Press it into place and you can press the legs in as well so that they're actually touching the glue. Let me turn around a little bit. Like that. The sun's just come out. That's nice. Press and hold for a moment. So then apply glue to the edge of the tabletop and into those little cutouts again. And bring in the remaining set of legs. Get them sort of straight along the top first. So you've got that nice flush edge along there. And then sort of pop the legs into the little cutouts. Turn it around so you can make sure that the shelf is sitting above the little pencil lines. So give it a good press. That piece can then be put to one side to dry and we'll prepare the top piece. 
So with the top piece we're just going to gently round over all edges on both sides of the piece. So hold it against your sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and as you sweep it towards you bring it into an upright position. And about five sweeps will be enough. So do that on each edge of the wood. Like that. And then turn it over and do the same thing again on the other side. Like that. And then you can finish that piece off in your hand with a piece of fine grade sandpaper. Just to tidy up the edges. This piece is now ready to be attached to the table. So apply glue to the top of the table. Make sure you get it right along the edges. And then the top piece is going to sit square on top so there's an even overhang at all edges. But for, before you pop that down, just make sure that the grain is running in the same direction as the grain of the shelf. And it's a small detail, but I just think it looks nicer when the grains are going in the same direction. So pop that down like that. And then you can pick it up and have a look around all the edges and make sure you've got that nice even overhang. And at this stage you can still sort of slide the table around if you need to. I'm quite happy that that's sitting centrally. And I'm going to secure that into place with some clamps. And I'm going to try to fit a couple at each side. And with these ones make sure they're on sort of clipped on properly before you let go of them otherwise they can sort of ping up and into your face so do make sure they're actually attached before you let go. <laughs> I've done that before. I'm trying to look for my orange tipped ones. I've got quite a few projects on the go at the moment and all of them are using clamps so I'm running out. And then I'll just get one at each side as well. Okay, and that piece can be left to dry. This piece is now ready for paint. So I apply two coats of paint to the table and then I sand it gently after each coat had completely dried. So I'm now ready to attach my lamp. And to do that, I'm going to use a little tiny bit of tacky wax. Lay that there, try to stand it up when I know it doesn't stand. So I'm going to use a cocktail stick just to get a little bit of wax out of there and I find when you try to sort of pull it up with your nail it gets stuck behind your nail and it can be quite painful so it's better to use a little cocktail stick just to get a little bit out on the bottom of the lamp there and that's probably a bit too much. And this is a new pot but my old pot must have lasted me a good sort of 10 years so a little really does go a long way. So just put that nice and smoothly on there and then just pop it into place and I want to have the seam at the back and I'm just going to stick it sort of in the middle. As I said earlier this table isn't going to be visible, it will be sort of tucked behind the sofa but I might still put a few bits on it. If I sort of take any photographs around the corner, then it will have a nice little display on it. And when you've stuck it down, just use a clean cocktail stick to remove any um, tacky wax that's showing around the base of the lamp. And you quite often see some really lovely displays, but you can see the tacky wax or the glue coming out from the base of the product and it just... Um, it ruins the overall effect really, so always get rid of any excess tacky wax there. I'm just going to give that another firm press. And there. There is the completed lamp and lamp table. So let's go and put that into place in the doll's house. So that's going to sit there at the edge of the sofa. 
and see what I mean about the lamp table being hardly visible. But I may do a little display because if I take some photographs by actually sort of positioning the camera further into the room, then we'll be able to see that and I think a little book on there might look quite nice. But that just adds another little detail to the room. And in the next project for the study, I'll be making a little desk which will sit here at the side of the chimney breast. And it's just going to be a really simple little desk, but I'll have that tutorial up for you soon. Now, another of these little lamps that I made was for my beach themed living room. And for the base of those, I used a piece of eight millimetre dowel. I applied glue and then wrapped some cord around and then used this same technique to add the lampshade. I think they look really good as well. I've also put the little bedroom lamps into place there. I think they look really nice as well. And I've used the same bases for those as I did for the study lamp. But you know, do have a look out for beads and things like that for the bases. You can buy some really nice beads and they'll already have the hole in them for attaching the shade and they come in no end of designs and colours and shapes so I'm sure you'll be able to find a really nice lamp base to suit whatever room you're making the lamp for and if you do have a go at making a lamp then please share your photos over in my Facebook group Little Bits and Pieces by You and I'm sure the other members would love to see your designs but that's it for today so thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.